Oh, Jesus. United States sets nuclear forces on alert. United States sets nuclear forces on alert. The American missiles are now targeting at the strategic targets of its enemies. We're its enemies. That's us. Fuck. We're its enemies. That's us. Fuck. We have come out of that with a sizable navy. We've taken the last little contingents of the navies of Oman, the UAE, and Saudi. Oh man, Russia's faction's getting huge. Look at the CSTO. Well, we might have to worry about the CSTO before we worry about NATO. Look at this, look at the size of this thing. A lot of them are bordering us too. Like most of the Caucasus and East Ukraine. Whoa. They're a much bigger threat to us right now. And of course they're at war with Yugoslavia again. We want the Caucasus back, so we're gonna have to fight the CSTO. Yep, 60 ships exactly. We've got two destroyers, 42 frigates, nine corvettes, and seven submarines. That's really not bad. They're all, most of them are seasoned as well. So they've got a lot of salt and pepper on them, which is always good. In terms of air superiority fighters, we've only got 255. That's not a lot. 90 multi-role, 24 strike fighters, 36 carrier fighters, which I don't know why we even have. 16 casts, 50 transport planes, and 100 attack helicopters. We really got to work on our air force. Now, the nice thing is we are less than a year away from a fifth generation air superiority fighter. This, I'm going to dump all of our fucking air XP into two. This thing is going to carry us for the rest of the game it's they're very good we can contend with even like western air with that thing we need to recover a little bit here let's also just import oil exclusively from our puppet now as well revolution sweeps regime from power in egypt celebrations have broken out across egypt following the collapse of the outgoing ruler's government the former dictator has been replaced under arrest following the decision of high profile figures in egyptian security services to side with the opposition a caretaker government under Hosni Mubarak has taken power until elections are held and has stressed the temporary nature of its rule. Oh, here it goes. Civil war erupts in Syria as regime crushes protests. Following the marked escalation of protests in Syria, Ali Sadreddini al Bayanud, I'm saying so wrong, Benuni, has ordered military operations across the country to crack down on what he described as lawless rioters and terrorists who are backed by unnamed foreign powers. The clearing operations have seen outbreaks of violence between loyalist troops and armed protesters who have acquired firearms from police armories and military defectors. It is quickly becoming clear that this was once a nonviolent protest movement is quickly descending first into insurgency and then into civil war. In some parts of the country, it appears that opposition fighters have taken control of entire cities, but much of the information coming out of Syria has become confused and convoluted. World leaders have called for restraint, while human rights organizations have criticized the brutality of al Bayouni's repression of protests. In real life, it was obviously al-Assad who did this. He responded to nonviolent protests with like just such brutality. ISIL rises to prominence. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi today declared the formation of what he described as the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. He revealed that the al-Nusra group fighting the regime in Syria had been formed by members of the Islamic State in Iraq, and that two organizations were now merging. Al-Nusra and its al-Qaeda backers have, however, disavowed ISIL, calling for it to be abolished. Analysts are of the opinion that Al-Qaeda and its Syrian branch, Al-Nusra, have very different goals and methods from ISIL, while sharing a common ideology and opposition to Syrian government. They're both Sunni extremists. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's organization has always sought to act independently of Al-Qaeda, pursuing his own sectarian agenda that targets Muslim minority groups in a way that Al-Qaeda has not done to the same extent. While its aspirations are transnational, Al-Qaeda branches such as Al-Nusra have normally confined their activities to target individual governments. All right, and I think I've said enough buzzwords to, to get buzzword bingo, so hopefully. Syria is going to let us back into their faction, or come into our faction, the Axis of Resistance. So let's get troops on the border. We're not going to give you access to our military bases. Obama, are you smoking crack? We've got some free construction slots too. Let's work on some more dockyards. We're going to contend the American fleet in this game. I can promise you that. Oh, Jesus. United States sets nuclear forces on alert. United States has sent nuclear forces on alert. The American missiles are now targeting at the strategic targets of its enemies. We're its enemies! That's us! Fuck! Libyan civil war as well. Man. Gaddafi. He's going down. We need to really work on our tanks. They're so far behind. They're gonna give us satellite access? 
Bro, I want the crack that Obama's smoking. This shit sounds fun. Sure? If you'd like to give us access to your top secret satellite network, we're definitely not gonna steal any information or establish back doors. Now nah, we'd never do that. Well, the Islamic State is, is dead. Uh, let's give it obviously to Syria. Yeah, this is just the diplomacy in this game. This is the whole world game like, oh, listen, we all hate each other. All right, we all hate each other. We do, but you know what's worse? ISIS, that's what's worse. Oh man, there we go. Al Nusra. We're gonna get rid of them finally. Man, they got they were really close to Damascus. Al Nusra is dead. That only leaves the free Syrian army. Oh man, Arabia. They just had a well, our puppet government just had a little uprising. This is where Al Saud is now in power. It's literally one of the Saudi families now in power, democratically accurate. It's exactly what happened. They just used their oil wealth to win elections. This is actually kind of a strong U.S. Not gonna lie. We've got a oh, we got a green Germany. I haven't looked around for a while. We've got a oh an RPF uh, France. Interesting. Call no Western Social Democrat Spain. Hey oh it's gonna be a nationalist U UK. Look at that. I didn't realize nationalist Poland, nationalist Germany, nationalist Spain. Wow. So it's going to be a nationalist Poland, Germany, and UK in Europe. That, that, wow. This is going to be an interesting game. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Ground Forces, acronym the NEZA, are land forces which the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps maintain in parallel with the regular army in Iran. See, there's, there's so many different types in Iran. It's ridiculous. In addition to their conventional military role, the Revolutionary Guard's ground forces are more geared towards internal disorder than the regular army. Okay, we'll give it all to Syria, of course. I'm sorry, what? This is an interesting game. I'll, gi I'll give it that. BJP versus Xi Jinping. Now, I will remind y'all that China has supported us with equipment in wars before. We're not very close with them. We are in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. They have given us guns in the past, and we have an okay relationship with China. We're not very close, but... Then again, India also has given us equipment in previous wars. They have. They've given us a lot of equipment in previous wars. They're justifying on Taiwan. Oh, fuck. They are justifying on Taiwan. We're going to see a USA-China war, guys, I think. We're going to see it. Oh, man. I'm glad we're not in this. We're just watching this happen from the sidelines. We'll help them with the air. Oh, my God. China's going to give us access to their satellites. Oh, that's a good deal. We help our ally. And we get satellite access from China. That's a good deal. We'll do our best then to hold, hold back the, the air in uh, the Himalayas. Try to shoot down some of these Indian aircraft. All right. When we get our forces there, well, let's try and let's try and push here. We'll do a concentration of force on them. Oh, China got an encirclement on those Indian tanks. Well, while we recover our military supplies and build up our economy, we're just going to involve ourselves in this war and see if we can help China win. Then again... A Chinese puppet in India would be a little scary. Here we come. Adaptable. Oh, shit. Hassan Saudi is now adaptable. That's huge. We'll give them special forces, too. They have air superiority. Let's see if we can change that. Man, the Iranian encirclement of the Indian Eastern flank. Let's go.
Severn Special Forces Division. The Severn Takavir Takavar uh, Brigade, also known as the Severn Unit, is an elite unit in the Ground Forces of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. It is considered one of the best units in the Iranian Armed Forces, with decades of military and combat experience both at home and specialty in overseas operations in neighboring countries. We'll get uh, a little bit better out of supply penalty reduction. I did not expect it to go this quickly. I'm going to be honest. I did not expect it. I know China's strong in this game, but this is pretty nutty. How many factories do they have? A lot. A lot of factories. We'll do combat foreign influence. We, this will be the last of the foreign influence. So we now have no one uh, with really any power over our country at this point, which is what we wanted to get to. That means that we'll be able to hopefully go up to great power soon. We're a little over halfway there. Oh. China just declared war on Taiwan. Japan is now at war with China. China is at war with Japan, Taiwan, and India all at once. Ultra naval presence. The current naval presence we have established in the Persian Gulf is not enough to outcompete or even to stand up against the American Navy, who have several bases in the Gulf. We need to increase the amount of vessels we have if we are ever to stand a chance at hegemony in the region. They just capitulated. The war's over. Communist Party of India, a puppet of China. We got it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Fifth generation air security fighter. We did guarantee their independence and Israel called our bluff. Well, let's bring our special forces over to the border. Call in Syria. Instant capitulation. That's about right. Are they at war with Egypt? Oh my gosh. It's the repeat of a six, uh, the seven day war, isn't it? Me and e uh, us in Egypt are at war of Israel. And Syria. Oh my gosh. It's literally a repeat of the past. All right. Let's try a push. I know our I know our special forces are good, but this is an unrealistic war because we would have already been nuked by now by by Israel. But that's fine. We're gonna need a naval invasion. Come on, come on, come on, get there! Oh shit, boys! Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Puppet Palestine. All right, at this point, we really just have to consolidate what we've had and start preparing. I mean, just getting really strong. I mean, the next thing is really to take on either the CSTO or the West. We'll probably go after the CSTO. It'll take a while for us to build up though. So to get our full territories back, we still have to fight Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Pakistan is guaranteed by China, so it's not an option. Turkmenistan is an option, but if we try and justify on them, they're going to get probably guaranteed by Russia. Afghanistan, we could realistically go to war with, but we need to recover a little bit. What we're going to do for now is work on continuing to expand our intelligence agency, go down more of our focus tree, build up a huge surplus of aircraft and equipment, which we're going to need for the coming wars. And then when we're ready, we're going to probably strike in the Caucasus, which will start a war with the CSTO. I think is what we're we'll send our, our A team to go get. A, I want to get our our intelligence capacity all the way up to 100 in the US. The US has finally built up really good counter intel, I think at this point. Cause for a while there, we were just doing whatever the fuck we wanted and they didn't do anything, but no more. We need huge stockpiles of all this stuff for the war. We have so much debt though. We do have to work on paying that off. We are start our drone industry. 
And so now we have a command and control network for drone operations to expand unmanned aerial capacities, all at the control of the ROGC Air Force. We're going to give a permanent air security modifier, which is nice. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Air and Space Force is the Strategic Missile Air and Space Force from the ROGC. It was renamed from the ROGC Air Force and the ROGC Air Space Force in 2009. U.S. withdraws troops from Iraq. The last convoy of U.S. troops pulled out of Iraq, ending nearly nine years of war that inflicted many casualties on both sides and left the country grappling with political uncertainty. The final column of around 100 mostly U.S. military MRAP armored vehicles carrying 500 U.S. troops trundled across the southern Iraq desert from the last base through the night and daybreak along an empty highway to the Kuwaiti border. For the United States, the military pullout is the fulfillment of a promise to bring troops home from a conflict widely considered the most unpopular war since Vietnam, and one that tainted America's standing worldwide. For Iraqis though, the departure brings a sense of sovereignty, tempered by nagging fears that their country may slide once again into the kind of sectarian violence that killed many thousands of people at its peak in 2006 and 7. Now that we resolve many of the issues plaguing our nation, we can look past just a few years and begin making preparations for the next century. Such foresight will allow us to plan for anything that happens. We will have to be diligent, and we will have to reform a bit to do so as well. We can also design a tank now. Though I don't think we have much army XP, so this will be rough. We literally have enough for it. Sassanid MK1. The Concord exam is a relic of the past, first used in 1979 to ensure the political loyalty of students who are attaining higher education. Now that we have consolidated our regime, we need uh, not have such a limiting factor anymore, and we can allow everyone to receive education. Approach the Concord Mafia. The Concord Mafia is a colloquial term for those who profit off of the students who are attempting to take the test, as although the test itself is quite cheap to take, the materials required are monopolized by those who need the who know the needs of students. And with the abolition of the exam, we should purge all individuals who are involved with the monopoly system. I I assume this is just like college boards Iranian like division. This is just like you know college boards SAT fucking corruption over there. It's good to know that we have the same problems Iran does.